Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on ascites. Ascites is a pathological accumulation of fluid in the peritoneal cavity, causing a distended abdomen appearance. It can be due to many causes, which can be classified into fluid imbalance, exudative ascites, chylus ascites, or nephrogenic cause. Let's take a look first at the fluid imbalance which can be due to liver cirrhosis, congestive heart failure, myxedema, or Bud Chiari syndrome. The peripheral arterial vasodilatation theory combines two theories, which are the underfill and overflow theories. In underfill theory, there is an imbalance in hydrostatic versus oncotic pressure. This causes the intravascular fluid to leak into the peritoneal cavity. The resulting low blood volume activates the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone pathway and the sympathetic nervous system to commence renal sodium and fluid retention, in an attempt to maintain volume. As more volume is retained, the hydrostatic pressure in the sinusoids causes fluid to be pushed out into the interstitial space. If the patient's lymphatic system is not robust enough to export the additional fluid away, it spills over into the peritoneal cavity to form ascites. Whereas the other theory is the overflow theory. Primary renal sodium retention in patients with cirrhosis causes intravascular hypervolemia. This increase in intravascular fluid, in turn causes increased hydrostatic pressure that forces fluid to overflow into the peritoneal cavity. This is a flowchart showing how the peripheral arterial vasodilatation theory causes ascites in these few conditions. First there are conditions causing portal hypertension or endothelial dysfunction. Splanchnic vasodilation occurs, reducing the effective circulation volume. The Ross system is activated, causing sodium and water retention and increasing hydrostatic pressure, hence causing ascites. For liver disease. In liver cirrhosis, destruction of the normal architecture, fibrosis, and other structural changes, contribute to increased sinusoidal pressure and raised portal hypertension. Exacerbating this is the presence of defective nitric oxide synthesis in the liver, which is responsible for vasodilatation and the presence of vasoconstrictors, including endothelin, angiotensin II, catecholamines, and leukotrienes, all of which serve to favor sinusoidal constriction and the development of portal hypertension, with the resultant driving hydrostatic force pushing fluid out into the peritoneal cavity. Splanchnic vasodilatation is crucial to the development of ascites. Vasodilatation of the splanchnic bed is caused by the release of vasodilators, either due to sheer stress in the splanchnic circulation, or as a result of neurohormonal signaling from the liver to the brain. Nitric oxide, although decreased in the liver, is present and released in increased quantities from the systemic endothelium. Other vasodilators, including calcitonin gene-related peptide and adrenomedulin, have also been implicated. These all causes reduced systemic vascular resistance, reduced effective blood volume, activation of ROS, and hence salt and water retention. Other conditions include congestive heart failure and Bud Chiari syndrome, where there is reduced effective arterial volumes, causing activation of ROS, and also salt and water retention, hence causing ascites. In nephrotic syndrome, intrarenal pathology leads to inadequate salt excretion. There is increased tubular reabsorption of salt. Underfilling may also play a role in some patients who have proteinuria and hypoalbuminemia, contributing to a decreased circulating volume and activation of compensatory mechanisms, resulting in salt and water retention. This is a flowchart showing how ascites occurs in nephrotic syndrome. First there is proteinuria and hypoalbuminemia. This reduces the effective arterial blood volume, then activates Ross system and sympathetic nervous system, causing sodium and water retention. For myxedema in hypothyroidism, there are low levels of thyroid hormones, causing increased extravasation of plasma proteins due to increased capillary permeability, combined with a lack of compensatory lymphatic and protein flow return rate to the plasma. Hyaluronic acid accumulates in the skin and produces edema through its ability to absorb or adsorb water. It also forms complexes with albumin which prevents it from being picked up and returned to the circulation via the lymphatic system. That's it for the causes of ascites in the peripheral arterial vasodilatation theory. Another type of ascites is the exudative type, which is caused by peritoneal cancer, infections like TB, or inflammatory diseases like SLE. There are two possible mechanisms. It could be due to an increased intraperitoneal oncotic pressure, such as in peritoneal carcinomatosis, which causes the tumor cells lining the peritoneum to produce exudates. Or another mechanism is the disruption of vessel wall integrity that allows fluid to leak through. In patients with SLE can develop an inflammatory sericitis, leading to exudate. 
Next, for chylocystitis, it is mainly due to an obstruction of lymphatic flow. This can be due to a pathological obstruction raising lymphatic pressures, resulting in fluid being pushed out and disrupting vessel integrity, leading to leakage. Examples include malignant lymphoma, surgical rupture of lymph nodes or vessels. The fourth type is the nephrogenic ascites, which is due to hemodialysis. Where in renal failure, uremia induces an inflammatory response that causes immune complex formation and obstruction of lymphatic channels. Causing ascites. That's all for this video. Thank you.